Hi, this is our uh, copter that drop copter flies. As you can see, it has six arms. Um, that gives us more st stability and more flight time for being in the air. The drone has several critical components. It begins with the GPS towers. We have two GPS towers right here. We also have an antenna for the controller to the drone. There's a third antenna also that links the laptop with its uh, radio antenna to the drone so you can see where the GPS location is on the computer. You can have control over the drone and also the drone uses the um, initial uh, momentum and the angle and pitch at which it is to keep itself stable. All these components are rapidly um, reporting their information at the scale of about 200 times per second. This is what allows it to adjust for wind and to adjust for any input that I might give it such that it stays aloft in the air. The last component of the dropcopter uh, drone is this pollinator device down below. And as you can see, it has a cap right here. And that cap is um, spins and that is where we add the pollen in such that we can tell the drone to take off and fly and then begin pollinating, also stop pollinating, and then presume to go to the next tree. So this, this bag that we have here is our hand pollinator control. So in theory, this one should have the best number of nuts that develop on a tree because we're gonna be applying the pollen directly to the female flower. So if the pollen is still viable, we should see the most number of nuts that develop on these on this branch. Now I'm hand pollinating them right now. Chestnuts are monoecious, so that means both uh, the male and female sexual organs are found on one tree individual. So here you can see the female flowers, they're usually found right at the end of the branches of a chestnut tree, kind of look like little pineapples when they're young. Um, this part right here is their styles poking out, the white part you can see, and right on the end is their stigma. They have one of the smallest stigmas of any flowering tree species. You can't see it, that's the part that catches the pollen right at the ends of all these styles. And then back here, the catkins, which are now old and dead, they've already released all their pollen. Um, they're completely male, and they are the part of the flower that shed the pollen. So we're hoping that the drone will be able to, some of the pollen will be able to reach these flowers here. So we are taking pollen from one chestnut tree um, that was hand pollinated and um, when the trees are hand pumped, they remove the catkins from where the bag goes. So instead of letting that catkin material go to waste, we are now taking those catkins and processing them um, to try to get more pollen. We want just the fine grains of pollen, of the anthers. We don't really need the filament. Um, yeah, that's what we're doing.
consisted of five American chestnut trees. The white bags on the trees are different pollination treatments we were testing. They were all applied before the female flowers were receptive and able to be fertilized. Then, about two weeks later, when the flowers were receptive, four of these trees were visited by the drone, while the fifth one was not visited by the drone. In the study, we had three treatments we were testing. The first was a no pollination control. For this treatment, the white pollination bag was kept on through the duration of the study and it was never exposed to any pollen. If we don't see any viable nuts in this treatment, it means we got the pollination timing of the trees right. The second treatment was the hand pollinated flowers. These flowers were pollinated with pollen on a microscope slide. We would expect to see the highest number of viable chestnuts from these pollinations because the pollen is being directly applied to the flower rather than it flying through the air either by the wind or by the drone. The third treatment was to test the drone pollination. For this treatment, bags were removed, the drone visited the four trees and released the pollen, and then the bags were put back on the tree. Results from these bags will give us an estimate of drone pollination efficiency. The bags were left on the trees for about 12 weeks while the chestnut seeds matured. The chestnut burr grows to be about the size of a baseball in this time, with very sharp spikes for defense. We found that none of the no pollination control bags produced any viable nuts. This means we got the pollination timing right. We also found that hand pollination was the most efficient because about 50% of the pollinations produced viable nuts. And lastly, nuts were also produced in the drone pollination bags. The efficiency was lower, but we do believe this is evidence of the drone successfully pollinating American chestnut flowers. We also found that the fifth tree, which was not visited by the drone, had a greater number of non-viable seeds compared to the trees that were visited by the drone, which may provide some evidence that drone visitation can improve chestnut yield. However, this tree was also the most isolated from neighboring chestnut trees, which could have resulted in a higher number of non-viable seeds also. This area of research should be investigated further. Efficiency would likely be vastly improved with more drone visitations. Overall, we do believe drones are able to pollinate American chestnut trees. This technology could be especially useful with pollinating isolated American chestnuts during restoration efforts. The American Chestnut Research and Restoration Project has spent the past 30 years developing blight-tolerant American chestnut trees. Currently, these trees, along with their pollen, are only allowed in government-regulated areas. Hand pollinating allows us to work with pollen under regulatory conditions. However, it is a labor-intensive method and works best with trees that have flowers that are easy to reach. In contrast, drone pollinating is less controlled, dispensing pollen in a 10-foot swath around each tree, and it requires substantially more pollen, but it can cover a much larger area in a shorter amount of time. Drone pollinating can be particularly effective for trees that are isolated from a pollen source and would otherwise not produce viable seeds. In effect, aerial pollinations represent a way to augment the genetic diversity of our American chestnut program. The success of this trial experiment increases the likelihood of using aerial pollination with other tree improvement programs looking to increase seed production and or capture genetic diversity from isolated trees.